Live from New Delhi, you're watching DD India Live, India's voice to the world. I'm Abhishek Mahajan, coming up in the next 30 minutes. Blast in southwestern Balochistan province kills at least 26, including 14 soldiers. Over 14 injured in a bomb blast at a railway station. India's Prime Minister Narendra Modi pays tribute to industrialist and philanthropist Ratan Tata, says he represented the finest traditions of Indian enterprise. Iranian Foreign Minister Abbas Arakhchi warns of risk of expansion of war beyond the West Asia as insecurity and instability can spread to other regions. News in detail now. Bombing claimed by Pakistani separatists killed 26 people, including 14 soldiers, at a railway station in the southwestern Balochistan province. The blast hit as passengers waited on a platform at the main railway station in the provincial capital Quetta. A hospital spokesman said that 14 members of the army and 12 civilians were killed. Vasim Beg, spokesman for Quetta's Sanman Provincial Hospital, said. 46 members of the security forces and 14 civilians were wounded in the attack. Despite frequent attacks in Balochistan, the toll of Saturday's blast was particularly high for the southwestern province, which borders Afghanistan and Iran. The train station explosion hit at around 8.45 a.m., which is 3.45 GMT. People were running here and there in chaos. Some were injured, some with blown up legs, some with blown up arms and hands. People were just running here and there. Protests in Bangladesh continue unabated. In a fresh series of demands, Bangladesh Nationalist Party is calling for fresh elections from interim government chief Mohammad Yunus. On Friday in Dhaka, hundreds of thousands of people took to the streets taking part in a demonstration by the opposition Bangladesh Nationalist Party, a long-time opponent of the ousted ex-premier Sheikh Hasina. They were demanding holding of immediate elections for parliament from the interim government of Nobel laureate Muhammad Yunus. In Bangladesh, after Sheikh Hasina's ouster from the prime ministerial position, there is no elected government. The parliament has also been dissolved and the interim government is only responsible to the president whose resignation is the only demand of the student activists. BNP is the main party involved in political activities in Bangladesh at the moment due to many restrictions imposed on Sheikh Hasina's Awami League. We are here to protest. We demand a free and fair election under Tariq Rahman. We want our country to have a fair election and we want to develop our nation in a very good way. Our demand is for a quick election. If our party comes to power, it will benefit the people. Prices will be reduced and we will ensure affordable food, especially for the poor who struggle with food prices. Our government will make food accessible to everyone. The US President-elect Donald Trump's Republican Party held on to a narrow edge on Friday as election officials tallied the final votes. This will determine control of the U.S. House of Representatives. Republicans have secured 212 seats, still now six short of the majority in the 435-member chamber, with 23 races left to be called. According to projections by recent research, Republicans are set to hold a majority of at least 53 seats in the Senate. The Senate or upper chamber and the White House have already flipped to Republicans meaning Donald Trump could have significant power to carry out his political agenda after he is sworn in on 20th January 2025. Control of the House gives the party the power to initiate spending legislation and launch impeachment proceedings against officials. Now, a federal judge on Friday granted a request by special counsel Jack Smith to pause the case against Donald Trump for conspiring to overturn the results of the 2020 presidential election. In a filing with District Judge, Smith noted that Trump won the White House race this week and is to be inaugurated as president on January 20, 2025. 
He asked the judge to vacate the filing deadlines in the case to afford the government time to assess this unprecedented circumstance and determine the appropriate course going forward consistent with Department of Justice policy. Judge granted Smith's request without comment. The Justice Department has a long-standing policy of not prosecuting a sitting president. Smith said he would file a status report with the court by December 2nd. And my colleague Shubhendu Ghosh, who is in Washington, D.C., scans through how prominent newspapers are covering Trump poll promises even when he will take two months to take over the mantle of power in USA. This magnificent tower that you're looking at is called the Washington Memorial. It's over 550 feet tall uh, monument. It's an obelisk in the memory of the first president of America, George Washington. That was the year 1789 when he became the president. We are in 2024. We now know the 47th president of the U.S. Donald Trump is the president-elect. Let's scan through the newspapers to see what's in the papers regarding his presidency and other stories. Washington Post, the first paper, uh, is carrying the picture of the outgoing president, uh, Joe Biden. This is after he promised a smooth transition of power and reinforced the legitimacy of the electoral system. There's another article uh, following that picture. It says Biden welcomes to power a man he deemed a threat. Sort of political irony. Biden has been for the past five years talking about how his uh, presidency, the ra reason why he ran for office was to keep Donald Trump at bay, calling him a fascist and a threat to democracy. And now uh, Joe Biden must welcome uh, Donald Trump back into the White House. Another article we're looking at is about the kind of legislations that Donald Trump and the Republican Party would be looking to do, especially in the domain of tax cuts. GOP, Republican Party, is set for quick work on trillions in tax cuts. The 2017 law extension, new deduction are the aim. If the party sweeps the Congress, they've already got the Senate. All eyes are on whether they'll be able to retain uh, the House of Representatives. If they're able to, a lot of legislations could uh, pass smoothly for them. President-elect Donald Trump is poised to push swiftly for new tax cuts if Republicans win the full control of the Congress, that is both Senate and the House of Representatives. So the next paper we're looking at is the New York Times. On the front page, it analyzes what led to the big win uh, for Donald Trump. It says president-elect spun his own grievances into political gold. It goes on to explain it. It says that he became, as it were, a vessel for the anger of millions of uh, Americans, uh, especially cost of living and other crises. He says that the grievances that he would talk about against the administration, they became, uh, as it were, the narrative of the MAGA movement, Make America Great Again, to which the Republican Party also associated itself. And those grievances also seem to reflect the grievances of people, ordinary Americans, against the administration. And the failed assassination attempt only added to his popularity, especially among his followers. And the final paper I'm looking at is the Wall Street Journal. Uh, it talks about uh, foreign policy, likely foreign policy, of Donald Trump. Uh, the headline says Trump to renew maximum pressure against Iran with new oil sanctions. President-elect Donald Trump, the article says, plans to drastically increase sanctions on Iran and throttle its oil sales as part of the aggressive uh, strategy to undercut uh, Tehran's uh, support of violent uh, Middle East proxies and its nuclear program. Remember earlier during his first term, Donald Trump uh, took a dim view of Iran, especially vis-a-vis -vis the Six Nation Agreement that Iran had entered into that sought to curb Iran's nuclear weapons work. So those were some of the highlights of the papers published today with camera person Jay Shankar, Shubhendu Ghosh for DD India in Washington, D.C. Now Israel launched 14 airstrikes at different locations in Beirut's southern suburbs on Friday night. The airstrike damaged buildings in Burj Barajne, Haret Raik, Lailake and Hadad suburbs of the region. Smoke billowed from damaged buildings and firefighters extinguished flames the next morning of the strike. The Israeli military spokesperson Avik Hai Adrai had asked residents to evacuate the region. Israel launched a ground operation and airstrikes against Hezbollah in late September, a year after the Israel Hamas conflict began. And the United States had charged an Iranian man in connection with an alleged plot ordered by Iran's elite revolutionary guard corps to assassinate President-elect Donald Trump. In a statement, Justice Department said that Farhad Shakari had informed law enforcement that he was tasked on October 7, 2024 with providing a plan to kill Trump. 
Shakeri allegedly told law enforcement he had no plans to formulate a plan to kill Trump within the IRGC's timeline. The department described Shakeri, who is 51, as an IRGC asset residing in Tehran. It said he immigrated to the US as a child and was deported in or about 2008 following a robbery conviction. Shakeri is at large and believed to be in Iran. Two other individuals charged on Friday, Carlos Rivera and Jonathan Ludholt, who are American citizens, were arrested in New York and are accused of helping the Iranian government surveil a separate U.S. citizen of Iranian origin. Now, Iran has warned that ongoing conflicts in Gaza and Lebanon between Israel, Hamas and Hezbollah may have far-reaching consequences. Iranian Foreign Minister Abbas Arakche on Saturday said the effect of expansion of war will not be limited to the West Asian region. The world should know that in case of the expansion of war, its harmful effects will not be limited only to the West Asian region. Insecurity and instability can spread to other regions, even far away. Now, the European Union could consider replacing Russian liquefied natural gas imports with those from the United States. European Commission President Ursula von der Leyen told reporters on Friday. She said the EU approach to trade policy is implemented when Donald Trump takes power again as US President in January will be to engage, look at common interests and negotiate. We still get a lot of LNG uh, via Russia, from Russia. And why not replace it by American LNG, which is cheaper for us and brings down our energy prices, but is something where we can get into uh, a discussion, also what our trade deficit is concerned. And Amsterdam has banned demonstrations for three days after Israeli soccer fans were beaten and injured in violent clashes in Amsterdam. Dutch police had launched major investigation into multiple incidents following the Europa League soccer game Thursday night between Israel's Maccabi Tel Aviv and Dutch side Ajax. Amsterdam has implemented several additional security measures in the wake of the unrest. Dutch Prime Minister Dick Skoof said he was horrified by the anti-Semitic attacks on Israeli citizens. Besides, he has assured Netanyahu that the perpetrators will be identified and prosecuted. All right, still to come on this edition of DD India Live. Pakistan's Punjab bans entry to parks, zoos and playgrounds as pollution worsens. Russian drone strike on Ukraine's Oresa kills one, injures 13. And Grammy Award winner Ricky Cage again nominated for the prestigious awards. The Indian diaspora has made remarkable progress in various professions in the United States, but is the Indian diaspora as yet a political force in the U.S.? Traditionally, Indian American would be uh, assumed to be supporting the Democrat Party, but we also see a certain degree of reorientation there. A significant number of them have also gone with Donald Trump. Kamala Harris really didn't make that much of an effort. Um, she didn't really properly engage with Indians or Hindu Americans on, on any issues that they care about. Indians have been very happy just taking a picture with a congressman and uh, uh, writing a thousand dollar check. No, we have to let them know what moves us, what concerns us. Welcome back. You're watching DD India Live. I'm Abhishek Mahajan. Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky called Donald Trump to congratulate him on his presidential election victory. Tesla CEO and Trump supporter Elon Musk also took part in the 25-minute phone call between both the leaders. During the call, Trump said that he would support Ukraine and maintain advanced cooperation. Musk also extended his support and said that he would continue supplying Starlink satellites. As per the reports, Musk was physically present with Trump during the call. Musk's presence underlines his close ties to the next US president. Zelensky further thanked Musk for the Starlinks, referring to the satellite internet devices used by Ukrainian troops during the conflict. 
Moving to the latest in Russia-Ukraine conflict, Russian air defenses intercepted and destroyed 15 Ukrainian drones over the southern Bransk region on Saturday. Meanwhile, Russian drone strike killed at least one and injured 13 others, including two children, in Ukraine's Odessa. Russia launched 51 drones that damaged several residential apartment buildings, private houses, commercial buildings and dozens of cars as they caught fire in an overnight strike on Friday. The Ukrainian air defense units shot down 32 of the 51 drones launched. And the air quality in Lahore city in Pakistan's Punjab province has worsened so drastically that it now ranks as the most polluted city in the world. With air quality reaching hazardous category as the AQI index has reached above 550, the hazard has prompted the closure of schools and work from home mandates. Air pollution from kiln smoke and crop burning has sparked government concern prompting a major weather crisis in the region. Now, India's Prime Minister Narendra Modi on Saturday wrote an article in an honour of Ratan Tata, one of the noted industrialists who died a month ago. In his signed article in Indian Express newspaper op-ed, Prime Minister Modi said that the absence is deeply felt across every segment of society globally. Ratan Tata passed away in Breach Candy Hospital, Mumbai on October 9. Remembering even after a month, Prime Minister mourned his death by underlining that all miss him globally. He mentioned in his article that those passionate about the environment and devoted to philanthropy are equally saddened. PM said that for the youth, Sri Ratan Tata was an inspiration, a reminder that dreams are worth pursuing and that success can coexist with compassion as well as humility. Prime Minister Modi said that Ratan Tata represented the finest traditions of Indian enterprise and a steadfast commitment to the values of integrity, excellence and service. Prime Minister Modi remembered Ratan Tata also for his contributions in fight against terrorism, saying that his swift reopening of the iconic Taj Hotel in Mumbai after the 26-11 terror attacks was a rallying call to the nation, being united and refusing to yield to terrorism. Prime Minister Modi said, and I quote, Just a few weeks ago, I was in Vadodara with the President of the Government of Spain, Mr. Pedro Sanchez, and we jointly inaugurated an aircraft complex where C-295 aircraft would be made in India. It was Sri Ratan Tata who started working on this. Needless to say, Sri Ratan Tata's presence was greatly missed. India's Prime Minister Narendra Modi is holding back-to-back -back rallies in the pole-bound state of Maharashtra. Addressing a rally in Nandar, PM Modi said that in the Haryana elections, the BJP secured a historic win and he predicted that the same will happen in Maharashtra. He added that Maharashtra has long suffered due to the Congress and its misdeeds. PM Modi also claimed that the Congress was attempting to divide the OBCs in the state. Maharashtra will go to the polls on 20th November with the results set to be declared on 23rd. Congress ke log संविधान के नाम पर अपनी एक अलग लाल किताब बंटवा रहे हैं कांग्रेस की लाल किताब पर ऊपर तो लिखा है भारत का संविधान लेकिन लोगों ने जब भीतर से खोला तो पता चला कि लाल किताब कोरी है सारे पन्ने कोरे उसमें बाबा साहब के संविधान का एक शब्द भी नहीं लिखा है ये उनकी बाबा साहब के प्रति जो नफरत है ना उसका ये नमूना है एन इंडियन यूनियन मिनिस्टर ऑफ स्टेट फॉर पर्सनल पब्लिक इवेंट्स एंड पेंशंस जितेंद्र सिंह अनाउंस दिस सक्सेसफुल कंक्लूजन of special campaign 4.0 implementation phase for institutionalizing swachhata or cleanliness and reducing pendency in government. The campaign covered more than 5.97 lakh offices in remotest parts of India. It generated revenues of more than Rs. 650 crore from 2nd to 31st October 2024. Sports now will start with cricket. Australia A beat India A by six wickets in the second unofficial test at the Melbourne Cricket Ground to win the bilateral series 2 0. 
Set 168 to win, Australia A's Sam Constas stood firm with an unbeaten 73, anchored by Boy Webster's 46. India gave a tough fight with Prasid Krishna taking a four-wicket haul in the first innings and Dhruv Jurel scoring 68 in the second. However, Australia's consistent bowling led by Corey Rocky Kioli and Michael Nessa took the game away from the visitors. Australia A clinched victory with a day to spare, securing a series sweep against India. The International Hockey Federation announced on Friday that former Indian goalkeeper P. R. Srijesh has been named the Men's Goalkeeper of the Year, while skipper Harman Preet Singh won the Men's Player of the Year award for the year 2023-2024. Both players have won in their respective categories for the third time in their careers. 28-year-old Harman Preet led the country to its second straight bronze medal at the Olympics in Paris this year, where he was also the top scorer with 10 goals. Srijesh faced 62 shots across eight games at the Olympics and saved 50 of them. He proved to be the hero of the quarterfinal against Great Britain, where he helped the team win 4-2 in the penalty shootout. The 36-year-old retired from the spot after the tournament. And the spirit of inclusivity took centre stage in Delhi on Saturday. Special Olympics Bharat, the National Sports Federation for Athletes with Intellectual and Developmental Disabilities, organised a run for inclusion. Thousands came together to stand in solidarity, united by one mission to make sports accessible to everyone. Special Olympics Bharat organized a unique run for inclusion in Delhi on Saturday. Special Olympics Bharat is India's national sports federation for athletes with intellectual and developmental disabilities. Harsh Malhotra, Minister of State for Corporate Affairs and Road, Transport and Highways and Special Olympics Bharat President Dr. Malika Nadda flagged off the event. Jo Sati Yaparaj run for inclusion Kelia Ikatri Tue Specially Maun specially able Bacho Kelie Bod Bod Badai De Tao or Unkelie Mira Yebi Sandesh and Manchki Tarafse Ki Ap Sablo. BJP leaders Pansuri Swaraj and Manoj Tiwari were also present, adding their voices in support of the movement. Malika Nadda, President of Special Olympics Bharat, said the run symbolizes both the spirit of sports and the power of inclusion. The run for inclusion is organized with the motto to include everyone in the mainstream of the society. We have 100 school children who are participating in the run for inclusion along with the school children we have more than 1000 special athletes who are part of this run for inclusion inclusion is a revolution that each one of us must join we must propagate it's extremely important one because this actually promotes physical health it actually encourages uh, going into the outdoors second when you actually see such a large participation you also realize that the awareness campaign is such a success the three kilometer run drew over 10,000 participants all standing in solidarity with special athletes more than 1,000 special athletes from 100 educational institutions participated, adding to the event's success. This run for inclusion serves as a precursor to the Special Olympics Asia Pacific Bowling and Boche competition scheduled to take place in New Delhi from November 18 to 23rd. Narayan Singh's report, DD India. And Dr. Malika Nadda, President of Special Olympics Bharat, stated that the run for inclusion aims to bring athletes with intellectual disabilities into the mainstream. In an exclusive conversation with DD India's Narayan Singh, she affirmed that Special Olympics Bharat is fully committed to enhancing the welfare of special athletes. Right now, I am joined by the President of the Special Olympics Bharat, Dr. Malika Nadda ji. Ma'am, a big occasion uh, considering the fact that uh, the way uh, the Indian Special uh, Olympic movement is growing by leaps and bounds, how you look this run for inclusion in that uh, process? Uh, Special Olympics Bharat is a sports federation working for the intellectually challenged athletes across the country. Today, the run for inclusion is organized with the motto to include everyone in the mainstream of the society. 
We have 100 school children who are participating in the run for inclusion. Along with the school children, we have more than 1,000 special athletes who are part of this run for inclusion. So how the concept of the unified events is helping the cause of the Special Olympic Bharat and uh, at the world level also? Inclusion is the key word today. Inclusion in every field, in education, in sports, in social living and in our lifestyle is what we are looking at. Isi ke madhyam se hum apne pradhan mantri ji ka jo maksad hai jis mein sabke saath ke saath sabka vikas ho iske liye hum special olympics bharat ki aur se run for inclusion ke madhyam se is sapne ko saakar karne ke liye aage bad rahe hain. How you looked at the big events are coming to India? First time in the history of Special Olympics Bharat, we are organizing regional game, Asia Pacific regional game, bocce and bowling, where 12 countries are participating. Each and everyone come to cheer our special athletes, motivate them and include them in the mainstream. So the motto is to include the athletes with intellectual disabilities in the mainstream and the run for inclusion is the perfect example of that. With camera person Piyush Narayan Singh, DD India, Delhi. Well, that's all for this edition of DD India Live. But do let us know your thoughts on the news of the day. For those on the go, you can get all the latest news and updates from India and across the world on DD India mobile app. The app is available on both Android and iOS. Scan the QR code on the screen to download now. And we'll be back with more news as it breaks here on DD India. I'm Abhishek Mahajan from all of us here in Delhi. Thanks for watching DD India Live.